Hello and Assalamu Alaikum everybody. I'm going to try and talk to you, I'll attempt to explain to you the issues surrounding the census that's going on in Sindh in particular, and in Karachi in particular, and why the Pakistan Tariq Insaf, the PTI, has, does not agree with the results as being shared by the Bureau of Statistics of Pakistan um, and the, the various issues that surround it. Uh, so for, to understand that, we'll have to first go back to the last census, which was conducted in 2017 under Nawaz Sharif's government. Uh, now, the major, the two major parties in, in power right now in the center that were like important to Karachi at this point were um, Pakistan Tariq Insaf and MQM. And they were, they were allied at that point. So they refused... They refused to accept uh, the count which were in Karachi, which was close to 16 million, stating that they believe the, ca the count was much higher and they demanded a recount, a more transparent count as well. Um, they, now, just them not agreeing to these results was, were causing a few issues. The court intervened and the court ordered them to, to sign the agreement to, you know, to sign the, the census. Um, which they did. However, in 2018, after Imran Khan's party, after PTI came into power, they passed a bill stating that the next census, instead of taking place 10 years later, would, would then take place five years to, in, you know, in five years to adjust the change, the, the, you know, the correct numbers. Right. So coming back to the present. Now, the new census, the count starts, uh, allegedly, and this is from uh, uh, from me talking to um, a couple of people who have been in, who are in Karachi, people who are very involved with the issues that, uh, that the people of Karachi face. And so they tell me that the census started with people, you know, coming door to door, accounting, uh, teams made pretty much like... Uh, you know, like they, they usually are made. However, a source says that these straight teams did not appear to be very knowledgeable about, about uh, you know, the divisions, about the way the constituencies were built, and they did not know a lot. And they were, uh, and also they were not doing very thorough counting. So this person gave me the example of their own family, their extended family, who were living in a, in a housing with say two or three floors. Uh, and they said, so they said that they came into the house, they counted the people on the ground floor, the first floor. They did not count the family, the family on the, on the second floor were out at that point. And they said that they would come back and count and two months on, nobody has come back and counted any numbers. Uh, another per source said that they were talking to some people who were in um, who lived in apartments. These were like um, say four four floors in the apartment, and each floor had say four units for house. So they would the first floor they would probably they would come and count the numbers the heads on all in all four units on that ground on that floor. On the first floor, then they would go on on the next one and they would count maybe only three out of four, maybe skip, and then they would skip a floor and then go on and skip a few, a few you know, units inside those apartment complexes. And those are, they say, very common stories coming from a lot of houses in Karachi. So saying, so, you know, loosely speaking, the numbers were not counted correctly. Now, the record areas... Uh, had so then the records were passed on and those records were not for the longest period of time uh, revealed the whatever records were there were not revealed here comes the really really funny part that allegedly when the records were revealed which were as of the 30th of april 2023 the pakistan bureau of statistics revealed close to 18 um, million people uh, so it was like, you know, roughly 17,819, something like close to 18 million people. Now, here, here's the funny bit, bit that the government says that um, we will give you an increase of, say, 1.8 million from the numbers that we have counted. The Jamaat Islami, which is an other party in Karachi that gets, you know, votes from Karachis, are insisting on 2.75 million. Like, it, it's it's... It's weird. It is just so unimaginable that 
they, they are kind of haggling and they're negotiating on numbers. Something as simple as just going there and counting the heads. Where do the negotiations even come from? Right? Okay. And then they, uh, you would probably have heard the term ulti ginti or like, you know, reverse count. So I'm going to talk to you about that. Now, Arslan Taj from Karachi, uh, PTI is a leader from Karachi. He is, he has taken this case on and he's working on it a lot. And he, he gives some figures where, um, where he, uh, he states that flood affected people from say, from Larkana. So, so he's like, you know, they say Larkana and other places in interior sin, after the floods, they had moved to Karachi. They had come to the, to various, uh, you know, more urban centers. Now it's funny because now here, I hear the, are the numbers that I have over here. They say that in Larkana, which is interior Sindh, which is mostly a Bhutto, a people's party area, has an 1.8 million increase in population. Whereas, whereas it, just like a one and a similar increase in, in uh, the population in Karachi, say 1.7, 1.8, you know, one, or close to 1.7 million. And it, it just does not make sense that an urban center that had population migrate to it has less of an increase in population than a place that had people migrating from it. So it just does not make sense. Now, here's the deal. Here is why these numbers are also important. Now, at the politics of it, it's important because if you cut down the number of people, the population of Karachi, that means that it's going to lose seats. There'll be fewer seats from Karachi in forming the provincial assemblies and also in the national assembly, right? And this would obviously cut down seats that PTI would have right from Karachi so that would affect the seats over there but that's just the political part of it there is a much bigger there is a bigger social socioeconomic issue with it I mean there is a huge diversity of population here there are unaccounted for people who came from the then East Pakistan which then became Bangladesh so they so as soon as partition happened in 1970, uh, 1971 they just chose to leave the the now Bangladesh, and they had just moved to Karachi. Those people were never given national identity cards. They were never given their, you know, that the citizenship or the nationality. They're also there's close, so that would be close to, uh, uh, close to three million of those people, and about one point two million of Biharis who are in a, and then also lots of undocumented Afghanis over here. So that means there are lots and lots of heads which are just not even accounted for. Right now, there are also people who come from various other um, parts of the province or even other parts of Pakistan for business because it's the economic hub. Now, these people, if you are not counting these people properly, the problem is then that it affects it affects the water supply, the electric. It affects all the other amenities that are needed. You know, the money that is given for for roads, uh, water gas, um, everything. And how then do you effectively run a city, a metropolis, the size of Karachi? You know, if you don't even have the basic numbers, once again, it always boils down to incompetence, corruption, bribery, and coercion, all of which are hallmarks of not just the PDM, but also People's Party. Until next time, take care.